Hello everyone, uh, this is the first video of the series of me learning Rust. I have never looked at this language, this is the first time I'm, I will see Rust ever in my life. I just picked a little bit ahead just so I know what to install and how to install it. I'll do it in the video. Uh, I'll be using this book at this address, and uh, it's I think the official uh, Rust programming language tutorial slash book. Uh, I'll be doing this on Windows uh, using uh, VS Code. So I have here some installation instructions for some tools that will help me program uh, the Rust in Visual Studio Code. Um, so let's begin, I think. Yeah, this book is written by Steve Kladnik and Carol Nichols, contribution from Rust community. This is the version. I think I think it's the, the already newer version, but we'll see. I will be using the HTML format, not the PDF. And uh, oh, let's start. Uh, forward, it wasn't, I think I'll skip it. There is no, doesn't seem to be any technical issues here. Uh, Rust is great, yada yada. Okay, uh, introduction. Uh, welcome to the Rust programming language, an introductory book about Rust. The Rust programming language helps you write faster, more reliable software. High level ergonomics and low level control are often at odds in a programming language design. Rust challenges the conflict uh, through balancing powerful technical capacity and great developer experience. Rust gives you the option to control low-level details such as memory usage without all the hassle traditionally associated with such control. Well, I guess, yeah, no pointers, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a garbage collection or something. I hope not. Uh, see. Rust is ideal for many people uh, for a variety of reasons. Let's look at a few of the most important groups. Uh, teams of developers, students, comp okay, this is just too too general. I don't know, open source developers, uh, people who have, oh, I guess, this is very sp specific. I think we should, okay, how to use this book in general. Books assume that you're reading it in sequence from front to back. Later chapters build on concepts in earlier chapters, okay. And earlier chapters might not delve into details on a particular topic. Uh, we might use Google for it, I don't know. And um, maybe I'll be interested in something that's not in the book, but we'll see. You find two kind of chapters in this book, concept chapters and project chapters. In concept chapters, you'll learn about an aspect of Rust. In project chapters, you'll build small programs together, applying what you've learned so far. Chapters 2, 12, and 20 are project chapters. See, blah, blah. Okay, uh, after I'm finished with I think, most of the book, I'll try to do some uh, I don't know, advent of code programs or some small projects without the help of this book, just to see how I manage with the concepts, to see if I like the language or not. Um, okay, chapter five discuss talks and methods, chapter six covers enums. Okay, it's just, uh, okay, no, I, I don't think, okay. Uh, this code does not compile, this is, yeah, different icons. Okay, I think, uh, there's the source in GitHub. I think in later chapters, maybe it will be relevant. I guess like in the first two, three chapters, we talk about like control flows and, and variable assignments. Less relevant. Oh, we'll see. Okay, getting started. Installing Rust. And, okay, well, let's call Rust, then write a hello world. And I think I'll use Cargo. I heard that Cargo is like the way the package manager for Rust. I'll skip the um, like manual uh, uh, compilation just because I think that the tools that will have a VS Code uh, work with Cargo and I don't want to set up a compile script just for five minutes and then switch into Cargo. Well, but we'll see. Okay, installation. Uh, yeah, first step is to install Rust. We'll download Rust through RustUp, a command line tool. For managing Rust versions. Okay, so how do I get this Rust tool? Okay, we're on Windows, so I'm gonna go here. I'll down download the Rust up in it. Uh, okay, 
So, okay. Uh, okay, so now after Rust is installed, then I uh, close and open the PowerShell again. We can have the check the version, Rust, verify that it's installed, Rust C, nice version. Yeah. yeah. Installed a newer version than the version in the book, uh, but I think we'll manage with it. So let's go back. Uh, yeah, this is the, the check the version and um, updating and uninstalling. Let's see if there is an update. Um, okay, uh, I think we have the latest version. Yeah, good. No update. So let's go forward. This is the hell world. As I said before, I think because I picked a little bit ahead, I think this is the hell world just uh, for manual compilation. And let's try it. Let's try it without VS Code just to um, just to see how the language is. Um, let's uh, make a directory called hell world. Uh, hello, just hello, uh, and then go into the directory. Um, we'll make a file. Wait, I'll open code just to create a, a file here. File name the two. Yeah. Directory main rs so main s. Um, okay, I think that some support for Rust is ready in. I didn't install anything, so I guess it comes from here. So let's do the first thing. Fn. I guess it's that doesn't need a function. Main entry point. I like to do curly braces like this. Print the line. Uh, Okay, you know why the exclamation mark? Until jealous, we'll do some hello world. Let's follow it to the letter. Uh, okay, and semicolon at the end. I think that's all. And I'll close the VS Code. We don't have anything here. Good, okay, close VS Code. Then I come to compile Rust C and main press good. Okay, looks like it compiled. Great. Let's run main. So basically, the, the antivirus was not happy with the the Rust uh, Hello World program, so I had to exclude this directory, and uh, I renamed the file to Hello RS because they had some I don't know something glitchy about compiling. To main.exe. So now let's try to compile again. We created a hello exe. Let's try to run it and we have hello world finally. After 10 minutes of troubleshooting. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's move forward. We have this. Anatomy of a Rust program. Okay, as I said before, we have the fn. I think fn means that there is a function. Main is the entry point. Let, let me let me just read. Let's review this hello world program in detail. Here's the first piece of puzzle. Uh, the lines define a function named main. The main function is special. Uh, I'll, I'll skip. I, I really don't want to do this verbatim. Uh, so there's browsers. Go. go. Parameters going into the parentheses, and you're, uh, you're wrapped with curly braces. You have the semicolon at the end. Uh, now that you standard style across Rust project, you use automatic formatter called Rust format. So just use something in VS Code. Um, okay, uh, the line. Okay, second print line. Calls a Rust macro. Okay. Uh, the function is a macro. You could 
for the function that it would have entered as println ah okay yeah that's cool like the exclamation mark denotes a macro wow this is this is actually great like in c you couldn't tell the macro from another macro without going into the code and here i can uh, identify a macro right ahead okay let's see prints hello world semicolon at the end uh, compiling running are separate okay um uh, pdb is probably the log information and maybe it uses, uses lvm or something or some i oh, know it uses the the microsoft compiler i think to generate it pdb if i'm not mistaken and uh this is the executable we yeah, have pretty straightforward so i'll not do it okay cargo now let's see what cargo that we have cargo installed same version as rust great uh, creating with cargo so this is like project and package manager so let's create a new project called hello cargo Corgi. hello cargo uh, okay created by replication let's go to hello cargo and uh, let's see what we have there we have source directory let's see what's there get ignore cargo tomo i thought it was like the uh, yeah it's the configuration format see first command creates uh, go into the hello okay let's go went to the, to the directory and now you can override the git behavior with this but i think the git ignore will just in a second we just look into it i think it's right about time to open this code so let's code to this function Git ignore okay just excludes target and subdirectories we still don't have a target but i guess it's where the all the intermediaries will be built into uh, cargo tomo is a configuration it's all grayed out i think we should install some uh, tools uh, to do it just a second let's see if there's something in source there's the main okay it's the standard hello world so let's switch here and uh, install the okay we installed the rust so let's install the rust analyzer extensions rust A Rust Analyzer. Oh, Rust Analyzer. Okay, done. Let's see if we have to install anything else. This is checking Rust, Rust up, Rust documentation, Hello World, Cargo, Cargo New Hello World. We already did it. Let's we did it with Hello Cargo. Um, okay, we've seen this this structure. And cargo build builds this okay yeah okay let's let's do some playing around with it if we do cargo build let's build okay finish building let's try a shortcut if it works okay uh cargo build okay this is good now we can build with sh shortcuts uh let's Try to debug and then I'll move to looking at into this file. Okay, created a new file, but first I want to see if I can uh, do a breakpoint and then debug. Okay, uh, so it's run. Okay, what should I choose? Do I need to install something? Okay, this is cargo run is to run, but no automatic run here so let, let's just use windows because i saw the pdb file uh, this program does not exist interesting ldb work doesn't like it well uh let's try to install extension for rust okay i have no idea what to do uh so i'll pause the video do some searching let's see debug 
Rust in NVS code. Same thing, right? The debug. The debug. The world. Oh, debugging. Okay, it was down the line. So install debugging support. I need this Microsoft C. Let's is yeah, I think I have this because of M programming in C this machine. So yeah, uh, so, okay, this is installed. I need some update. No, no need for an update. Great. So okay, what's next? Have this installed. Okay, using Rust and Laser debug. Let's start the bug. Okay, and just need to set a breakpoint. Okay, it did set a breakpoint. Now we have to go to the settings. Okay, for the settings here, settings, it maybe. Where are the settings at? See to plug a low breakpoint anyway, which you can find in these settings. Everywhere. Okay. No setting everywhere. Great. And now it should work. Okay, so which one do I choose? Ah, that's weird. Okay. Okay, so I um, think those that program doesn't exist. Open launch JSON and I don't have a program. So if I just add configuration, I have something in Rust here. Nothing for Rust. Great. Um, First to set a breakpoint. Okay, we did this. Put my NRS. Do this to start debugging. Either use the Rust and as a debug command or select the debug code lens main. Weird. I think I'll delete this bunch JSON file. Start over. Let's see the debug. Okay, great. Uh, I hope that. That was all the configuration. And now we're here. Uh, no locals. You can look at registers. Not relevant now. And uh, let's see. Prints out a debug console. And great. Now we can debug here. Let's see if I have help. Okay, great. This is a macro. Let's see if I can follow here. Look at the macro. Okay, there's another macro here. And uh, underscore from okay. Well, we'll not go into this right now. Uh, let's just uh, continue with the tutorial. So now we can debug, we can build. But let's see what happens if I run again. Five doesn't help it. So maybe line I'll try to see what it can generate. In the, in the meanwhile, we'll just debug it like this. Um, yeah. So let's see if I do run. Hello world, okay. Let's move forward. Sorry for taking so long. I really didn't look at anything. First time I'm doing Rust. Okay, IntelliSense works okay. Hints, okay, great. Hover information, yes, everything. Auto completions, semantic highlighting. Yeah, I can see it's a little different than this, but ah, uh, yeah, because I have a theme uh, that I've installed, so my colors will be different. Where okay, so this is settings JSON. You would add this, add this to change style. Okay, this is navigation, linting. Okay, there's a linter already. Quick fixes, great factoring, formatting, debugging. Okay, ah, this is the debugging section we already looked in. 
great. Okay, I think I think we're ready to go forward. So where we stopped, we ran the file, we debugged it, like we could step into this program. So let's go back and look at the file structure that we have. I think we had the git ignore at the beginning that excludes this directory. Uh, we had the cargo tomo still not highlighted. Let's see if I have something to highlight tomo files. I can install a uh, better time but install this. Oh, and let's look at this. Okay, now there's a little bit of coloring here. Okay, so we have the package. I think it identifies the package, name of the package, version, um, and addition. Addition. See, okay. like this. Uh, the first line of the package is a section heading. That indicates that the following statements are configuration of the package. Okay, as we add more information to the file, we'll add other sections. I hope that the cargo will do this automatically. Uh, the next three lines set the configuration information cargo needs to compile your program. Uh, the name, version, and the addition of Rust. Oh, okay, so this is the version of the program that I'm using, and this is the addition of Rust. I guess each addition has breaking changes. So some if it changes then that you have to look out for okay um we don't need any other crates for this project but we will use in uh, in chapter two great so ah, okay so crates probably something like uh, dependencies uh, other programs so i wonder if it's like open source or closed source uh we'll see uh, look, first thing I uh, will include here, uh, I'll try to see if there's open source, just so I'll know what we're uh, getting into. Okay, so Cargo has generated a Hello World program. Yeah, we saw that. Um, cargo expects our source code to be in the SRC folder. Okay, correct. Uh, we start a project that doesn't use cargo as we did with the hello world in the, the beginning you can convert it to a project that does use cargo move the project code into src directory and create an appropriate cargo toml file okay so as i see for a cargo project for us you just need an src folder and a toml uh, file that describes the project um, okay yeah dependencies here i think uh, future dependency in chapter two uh okay so building cargo project okay we did cargo build and let's let's just do it again to go over here uh, this partial okay we have the cargo build from before uh hello cargo this is the version uh finish dev and optimize debug info so i think an optimize is like optimization flags like in C C plus plus and debug info is the PDB file, right? Uh, let's see, I don't see the, the PDB file. Let's see if we have something about the target folder here. No. Okay, so we'll finish this page and then I'll look into the target folder to see what we have there. Try to identify things there. Okay, uh, if all goes well, okay, running the hello world. Uh, let's, let's do it. Let's run it from command line just to see. It's, where is it? Target debug, target bug, hello cargo, exe, right? Okay, it runs, everything works. Uh, I can do the cargo run also. Let's try cargo run. Okay, now I have some uh, stats, it ran in 0 0.00 seconds. Um, yeah, very optimized program print hello world um okay so this is the cargo run wow their their software their hello world run 33 uh, point 33 seconds my computer is not that good uh but it's still zero seconds uh, let's run again 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 weird okay that's weird I guess maybe because I ran it before and there's some cached things already present. 
So maybe this is why it ran faster. Cargo check. Let's see. Let's cargo check. Finished. What provide a command called cargo check? This command quickly checks your code to make sure it's it compiles but doesn't produce an executable. Oh, okay. This is I think what we use, like what the VS Code uses to to get the error messages. Uh, well, now we don't have any means to benchmark this, but I guess the cargo check the cargo check faster than the cargo run uh, because it doesn't have to link or anything. Oh, maybe partially. I don't know. Well, we'll see. It doesn't matter for now. Okay, so let's recap. We had the cargo new to create a project. We had cargo build to build the project. Cargo run to run. And cargo check just to check the source code that it compiles. Great. Um, yeah. Okay, so instead of saving the result of the build in the same directory as our code, cargo stores it in the target debug directory. Um, and okay, it's same for building and running uh, independent of the OS. This is great, but I'm not going to try to do it on other OSs. Maybe I'll do some Linux, but really, I don't want to test the uh, like the different OSs unless I have to because it probably works. I don't have any reason to suspect that it will not work, especially with this basic uh, tutorial. Uh, okay, building for release. When your product is finally ready to release, you can do cargo build dash dash release to compile it with optimizations. I wonder if I have some control of which optimizations to use, but we'll uh, look into it later. Uh, this command will create an executable in target release, not target debug. Okay, instead of target debug, optimizations uh, make your Rust code run faster, but turning them on lengthens the time it takes for your program to compile. Well, makes sense. Uh, this is why there are two different profiles, one for development when you want to rebuild quickly and often, and another for building the final program you'll give to a user that won't be rebuilt re repeatedly and that will run as fast as possible. If you're benchmarking your code's running time, be sure to run the release benchmark, uh, the benchmark on release. Uh, okay, so I wonder if you could like partially uh compile the files in uh, like optimized mode and partially in, in debug mode just for uh you know sanity testing and, and optimization testing where i just want like specific algorithm or specific section of the code to be optimized just to see how it optimizes and and the rest of the code to run it in debug mode i was really comfortable doing it in uh, c c plus uh, plus but uh, we'll see we'll see if i even need it because People say like, it's language that uh, makes it uh, like I don't know easier to write these sort of uh, programs. So uh, let's continue. Uh, so Cargo is a convention uh, with simple projects. Cargo doesn't provide a lot of value over just using Rust C. Yeah, but it will prove its worth as your program becomes more uh, intricate. Once program grow to multiple files or need a Dependency, it's much easier to let Cargo coordinate the build. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Even though the car, uh, the Hello Cargo project is simple, it now uses much of the real tooling you'll use in the rest of your Rust career. Uh, in fact, the work uh, on any existing projects, you can use the following commands to check out the code using Git and change uh, change to that project directory and build. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll use some Git. Uh, I don't think that for the first couple projects, couple like a couple chapters, we'll use Git. Maybe when there's something uh, more intricate, we will. But yeah, I, don't, I don't see the reason to use Git right now, especially since like I'm not doing anything special with the code. It's just be just the boilerplate that the chapters will have. Uh, okay, so to summarize, we installed the latest stable version of Rust using Rust up. Well, not. No, because we used Windows, but update uh, to your Rust version. We're up to date. Open local installed documentation. We didn't do this. We're using the online documentation. Uh, write a hello world and use Rust C. Uh, yeah, we had uh, like an antivirus thing. It pinged the executable when I tried to run it. I had to 
exclude the, the folder, so I don't know about this, if it works for everyone. Uh, and uh, using cargo, I think I'll, from now on I'll use cargo, but I do want to uh, step into the target folder just after reading these three sentences, and uh, and we'll see what's there. Uh, this is a great time to build a more succession program to get used to reading and writing Rust code. So in chapter two, we'll build guessing game program. If you'd rather start by learning how common programming concepts work in Rust, see chapter three and then return to chapter two. Okay, we'll pick into chapter two, see what's there and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, so let's go to the uh, target. Okay, we have hash deer tag. This uh, looks like just a hash function for now. This file is a cache directory tag created by Cargo. For, like this, uh, you can go here to read about caches. Okay, it's, I, don't, I don't think I'll do it right away. I think it'll be a little boring. Uh, rest info JSON. Okay, we have some information, the hash, the commit hash, version information, oh, ooh, some linking things, out, rlib, I think this is the standard, probably something under the library here, some libs, some dlls, some toolchain, okay, yeah, this is, I think, the information for the compiler, and with a debug, ooh, a lot of files, we have the debug file, the debug source code uh, link, uh, cargo lock, okay, that's probably just a log file, the executable, and probably some info for incremental builds, incremental builds, sorry, uh, examples don't have, dependencies, okay, uh, build folder and a fingerprint folder, okay, uh, a lot of hashing, a lot of intermediary uh, things, I think, I don't know what the examples are, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I'll never have to go into this folder, fix things just to run the, the executable. Uh, so, great. So I think yeah, I'll stop the video for now. And um, next video we'll have uh, the chapter two, or uh, we'll do chapter two and three together. I think it'll be a little because I really didn't know what's happening. So uh, see you in the next video.